Now let's tell you about Israel's war in Gaza. Today they stepped the bombing of Rafah. A ceasefire deal remains a distant prospect. It seems like Israel will continue its war. Now the question is, will this war be fought with Indian explosives? And I'll tell you why I asked this. A video is doing the rounds. It was apparently shot in Gaza. These are the remains of a missile. And going by one account, it was fired by an Israeli warplane. Now look closely. You'll see a label. It says, Made in India. We haven't been able to confirm these claims. Pro-Palestinian outlets are sharing this video. They say Indian explosives are enabling Israel's war. Neither India nor Israel have commented. Also, this is not the first time that a story like this has come to light. Let me show you another one from the month of May, where Spain had refused permission to an Indian ship. It wanted to dock at a Spanish port. Spain did not allow it. Why? Because reports say the ship was transporting explosives. It began its journey from India's Chennai, which is a southern city in India, and the ship's destination was Israel's Haifa port. A Spanish newspaper published this story. It claimed that the ship was carrying 27 tons of explosive material. Now, Spain, as we know, has taken a tough position against Israel. It opposes the war in Gaza. It has also recognized the state of Palestine, one of the four European countries that have done so. There was a time when Spain used to sell arms to Israel. But all those supplies have now stopped. As the war progressed, Spain hardened its position. Here's how their foreign minister explained the move against the Indian ship. And I'm quoting, This will be a consistent policy with any ship carrying arms to Israel that wants to call at Spanish ports. The foreign ministry will systematically reject such stopovers for one obvious reason. The Middle East does not need more weapons. It needs more peace. Again, India gave no response to the statement. But let's dig a little deeper. Is India really supporting Israel's war? Is India arming the Israeli forces against Palestinians? Officially, the government's policy remains consistent. It wants Israel to exercise restraint. It backs the idea of a two-state solution. In fact, India had condemned Israel's recent attack on a refugee camp in Rafah. The heartbreaking loss of civilian lives in the displacement camp in Rafah is a matter of deep concern for us. We have consistently called for protection of civilian population and respect for international humanitarian law in the ongoing conflict. We also note that the Israeli side has already accepted responsibility for it as a tragic incident and announced an investigation into the incident. New Delhi's approach has been balanced, calling out the terrorism of Hamas but also urging Israel to exercise restraint. Experts say any material support from India is out of the question. But Indian explosives can still end up in Israeli hands through other means. Here's what some reports say. That third parties could purchase Indian explosives, potentially on Israel's behalf, and supply them to Israel. Third party vendors, like arms dealers, are also a possible route. They offer alternative outlets to buyers like Israel. You see, not all arms deals have to go through the government, and loopholes like these can be exploited. So here's what New Delhi should do. Consider the optics and take action accordingly. There's also history to consider. For decades now, Israel has been a steady defense partner for India. Israel and India established diplomatic ties only in 1992, but their defense partnership began earlier. In 1971, when India was fighting a war against Pakistan, Israel offered support. It supplied India with arms, ammunition and instructors, despite having no diplomatic ties with New Delhi. In 1999, when India fought Pakistan in Kargil, Israel supported India with more military equipment. So New Delhi has a lot to consider. What Israel is doing and the allegations of genocide in Gaza and the history that it shares with Tel Aviv. India should consider all its options carefully. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison Lagrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. From elections to climate change to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, 
we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.